Hello, my front porch friend. So good to be with you as always. I'm sort of in an unusual place today, but it's because I have an unusual word for you. You know, I'm actually in my home place of my great grandfather. It was where my grandfather was raised. It's just a little bit down from my house, really. But this word that the Lord gave me to give you today, actually, there's, there's four words and four numbers he's given me. I'm amazed how God seems to have you on his mind because every week, whenever I pray for you, and I'm just saying, Lord, give me your word for my front porch friends. I want it to be what you are saying to them. Every time I pray that, he speaks so clearly what he wants you to hear. And today, these are the four words. I'll tell you about the numbers in a minute. But these are the four words he's told me to say to you. And here they are. He said to tell you, have faith and expect miracles. Have faith and expect miracles. And as I begin to meditate on that word, I begin to think about something that I believe is just one of the truest pictures of faith that I know of. So I had to come out here to this old home place where my cousin still lives, and he's the one in the family that grows the garden. So I have come out here to the garden. Look here, here's the squash, look under there. Can you see that squash growing? I just love, you know, my family all of my life, how many of you relate to this probably? We had a garden every year of my life. Growing up, my parents had a garden. My grand, Both sets of my grandparents had beautiful gardens. I was raised on just garden vegetables. I mean, all of my, we just, we, we lived on them all summer, which was glorious. And then mama canned green beans by the, I don't know, Lord have mercy, so many you can't believe, and canned tomatoes, and you just keep going on and on and on. And then we ate them all winter. And there's nothing like them. Spoiled me, spoiled me. Just nothing like a homegrown tomato. You cannot buy them. You gotta grow them for some reason. In fact, talking about food's making me hungry and um, a bit distracted, but mother told me, just a little bit ago that after I finished talking with you tonight, she has cooked me fresh green beans and some fried squash. So I'll be heading over there to have some of the squash in just a few minutes. But I had to come here to give you this word. Because when I look at Jack's garden here, back there is these tomatoes and I'm just squatted, just down here by the squash right here. But when I look at a garden, a garden is the most perfect picture of faith. It takes faith to grow a garden. Have you ever thought about that? Farmers are men and women of great faith because they believe that when they plant this little seed, right here's a squash seed. Look how, look how little that thing is. And it doesn't look anything like that squash right over there. No, here's the little seed that produces all of this right here. And in this little seed, oh, it's just innumerable squash. If you really think about it, because every squash is gonna produce a lot more seed that produces a lot more squash, that produces a lot more seed, and on and on and on it goes, and it was God's idea, and it was a wonderful idea. But every farmer, and my cousin Jack, when they plant this seed in the ground, they know it's gonna take a little while for this thing to produce what they're believing for, what it's gonna produce. They believe that there's life in this seed. He believes that when he plants a little seed in this soil right here, now he knows he's gotta plant it in good soil. He knows he's gotta plant it at the right time. He knows that. And then faith makes him keep coming out here when there's no sign of change. Jack believes. He believes, even when he can't see it, he believes that that seed he planted in the ground is down there working. And so every day he'll come out here, you know, he'll start looking. No, nope, no change, no sign of it yet. But he has faith to know that seed is alive down there. He can't see anything, but he knows it's working. Something's happening. Something's moving. 
and he keeps coming out here and he starts looking for the breakthrough. He's looking for this little seed to turn into something, to, to turn into a stalk that's going to break through the ground and produce fruit to take care of him and our family. Every day he's watching for the breakthrough. Every day he has faith and he expects a miracle. This little seed right here contains a miracle. There's life in this seed. And my friend, many of you today have been given the seed of a promise. Jesus said in the word that beautiful parable of the sower, the farmer that goes out and he sows his seed. And he explains how that for some of the seed, he said the, the that the enemy, he just comes immediately and he steals the seed, he doesn't, just never, never produces anything. Immediately the seed's taken. He said, for some people, they sow their seed. And he even says, the seed is the word of God. They sow their seed. And then he says, when times get hard, they cannot endure. Their roots are shallow and they never produce what the seed was and the promise was supposed to produce. He said, then there's a third group. They plant their seed. It begins to grow and watch. This was, this is huge. The cares of this life become weeds and briars that turn it, begin to choke out the life of what was supposed to produce fruit. The cares of this life destroys the promise. And then he said the last group, and that's who you are. There's some that plant the seed of the word in their heart and they produce some 30, some 60, and some 100. You're going to be 100. But see, my friend, I believe today that the Lord is wanting to encourage you to remember the seed that he has given you. And he makes it clear, the seed is the word. What word have you been given for what you're believing for tonight? What promise? What promise? I ask you that a lot. You know why? Because it's that important. The word is everything. Your promise is everything. And I love it because sometimes God will give you many, many multiple promises concerning your situation. Claim everyone, hold everyone. He's given you a handful of seed. That means you're going to produce a great crop. But you know what? Just one seed is enough. If you've got one word from God, if you've got one promise from God, you've got all you need. What is your promise? What is your word? You say, Ms. Karen, I don't think I have a word. Well, you can pray until you get one. You go get in that word. You go stand on that. You go just start. The Bible itself is just a book of seeds. Because all you've got to do is you read the promises in the word of God. You just read that word. Read. I don't care how many times you've read that passage. Just read it because then you also have the spirit of God that becomes a voice. And he makes those words on the page become a speaking voice that will speak into your life. You'll know when you get a word. Nobody will have to tell you, hey, I think that's a word. No, you'll know. You will know when a word becomes rhema. And when you get a rhema word from God, it's like God from heaven reaches down with his hand and he just drops that seed right into your heart and into your spirit. Now, once you get the word, here's the deal about a seed. You just don't know how long it's going to be before that thing. Now, like these squash, I, th I think they take probably about ah, close to two months maybe to produce. Now, that's some of my favorite some of my favorite seed is when he plants quick and it, and it produces quickly. Don't we all love that? But not all seed does. Let me tell you something. When you've been given a promise and you planted that seed in your heart and it's still there and you've been watering that seed, you've been believing, but you've seen no sign and it's been years. It doesn't mean it's not working. I have found in my life that sometimes the seed that takes the longest to produce is actually going to produce something that's going to last beyond your years. It's going to sustain not only you, it's going to sustain generations that's coming after you. You know how I know it? Because I'm walking over here to something that's on our property. 
Look here at this tree. You know, I've talked to you before. I love big trees. Look at this thing. It's just a monster. It's a big oak tree. Oh, my, my, my. I wish you could see it. And the wind is blowing all through it. This beautiful, beautiful big oak tree is so old. It was actually here when my great grandfather lived here. This oak tree was here shading my great grandfather, shading my grandfather when he was a little boy. And even my mother, when she came to visit and me, when I was a little girl, this oak tree has stood here for generations. And you know what? This oak tree came from this little seed. This was a, this is hard to imagine. This gigantic oak that's lasted generations started from just a little seed. But this little seed was planted and it took a lot of time, but it produced something that was huge and glorious and lasted for generations. Sometimes when the promise of God seems like it's just taking the longest to produce, I believe if you will keep believing, you'll keep watering that seed, you'll keep standing, you'll keep taking care of that promise that's in your heart, you're gonna find that when your, your promise comes forth, it's gonna be something that outlasts you. It's gonna be something that's going to be provision and shade for the generations to come, your legacy of faith that you're leaving behind. See, there's a great example of this. And this is my second word to you. It's the four numbers. And here's the numbers the Lord said. First of all, remember the four words. Have faith, expect miracles. All right? Now here's your four numbers. It's 11, 11, 1, 1, 1, 1. It, I want you to turn with me. And I'm, looking, I'm reading in the New Living Translation. And it's Hebrews 11, 11. This is somebody's word. Listen. This is a perfect example of what it is to have a seed and a promise from God that takes a long time, all right? But oh, did it produce. Look here, there you go. Here, let me read it to you. Hebrews eleven eleven. it was by faith that even Sarah was able to have a child. I'm reading from right here. It was by faith that even Sarah was able to have a child though she was barren and was too old. She believed that God would keep his promise. <laughs> that is so powerful. It was by faith. Sarah is the perfect example of a woman that had faith and expected a miracle. Oh, she was expecting, all right. It says, it was by faith that Sarah conceived. Watch. When she had two impossibilities in her circumstance, she was barren and she was too old. Some of you right now, your financial condition, you are barren. Your marriage is barren. There's some of you that your health is barren. There's some of you right now, your, your children spiritually are barren. It's already impossible. Sarah's situation was already, she'd already come through her childbearing years and she was barren. And then when she gets too old, she can't even have children anymore. She's already gone through the change. It's already happened for her. She's 65 years old when she receives a promise from God. You're going to have a son. Why didn't you give her that promise when she was 25? Because if God waited and gave it the promise when it was impossible, ultimately his glory, oh, would last for generations. If he'd given her the baby when she was 25, it'd been great for Sarah, but we wouldn't be talking about her. <laughs> no, God waited till Sarah was 65 years old, and then he said, you're going to have a baby. Now, surely she'd have it by the time she's, what, 66, 67 at least, right? Please? She looks maybe a little bit young, hopefully. No, no. God didn't tell her when she was going to have the baby. He just said the baby's coming. No, Sarah waits 25 years. That's why the word is so beautiful here. In Hebrews 11, 11, he says, by faith she conceived when she was too old and barren. And you know why she did it? Watch, 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 watch. 
Why did she do it? Because she believed that God would keep his promise. She just kept believing. She kept believing. She kept believing. Come on, it's been it's been nine years and she's still believing. It's been 13 years and she's still believing. It's been 23 years and she, you know, what if Sarah, what if Sarah was one of our front porch friends? I would have loved that. And what if, you know, that's why I love our comments. When you comment below, it's like our prayer line. Your comments are, are the way that we pray for each other. And it's really our point of contact when I pray for you. What if, and I love it because we all read each other. You know, we read each other's comments. We pray for each other. What if Sarah was on one of our front porch friends? And what if Sarah was commenting below tonight and she was saying, y'all pray for me. I'm 65. My name's Sarah. And I've gotten a promise from God that I'm, I'm going to have a baby. Well, I think you and me both might be going, well, okay, praise God, Sarah. All right. Well, me and a bunch of front porch friends, we're going to believe with you. And what if this front porch friend, you know, Facebook thing was going on and we'd still been on here for all these years. And what if in about 13 years she'd, she'd send up, what if every week Sarah was posting a comment? I'm still believing. <laughs> every week, what if on our front porch friend, here's Sarah's comment. I'm still here and I'm not moving. What if after 14 years, she's still commenting? I'm still believing. What if after 24 years, Sarah says, I'm 89 and I'm, and I'm still believing? Honey, me and you both might have been going now. Bless her heart. Bless her heart. Lord, bless her. Lord, help this woman. The truth is, she was 90 years old when her promise was made flesh and she was carrying that boy in her womb. When, when it wasn't enough that she was barren, now she's naughty, it's a double impossibility. And when that woman was between somewhere 90 to 91 years old, she gives birth to her promise because God kept his word to a woman who still believed that God was faithful to keep his promise. God is faithful faithful to keep his promise to people who will not stop believing. Oh, I read something this week that was a man who believed like that. His name was A.J. Tomlinson. I don't know if you've ever heard of him or not, but, but I've been reading this book on his life. It's so powerful. It was a bi it's a biography of a man. He lived in the, the 1800s and into the, into, I'm not sure what year he died, but you know, into the 1900s. And when he was younger in his ministry, he had an orphanage. And, and he was just going through critical financial times. He had these children, about 25 children in his orphanage. And I mean, these were in hard times in our nation. I believe, I believe this was like in the year early about 1900. And he has these precious children. They have no food. And it's just day after day, this man believing just for anything to feed these children. And I was so touched by this. Look here. Look at this. I read this yesterday. He says here, I'm reading from his journal. I want you to see this. A.J. Tomlinson said here, it was on April the 10th. He said, my corn for the horses failed yesterday, but God has arranged a way, another way for him to feed his horses. He said, no human being knows the pressure that I'm under. Some of you relate to that right now. Nobody knows the pressure you've been under lately. He said, no, no human being knows the pressure I'm under, and I can seek help of none but God. He said, if he doesn't come to my rescue, I'm totally ruined. 25 mouths to feed, which are several days tardy now. Now watch this, ladies. He said, but God being my helper, I will pray and trust. And if I fail, I will go down trusting God. <laughs> A.J. Tomlinson said here, I will pray and I will trust. And if I fail, I will go down trusting God. He said here, God's word is true and I am determined to trust him by grace. Oh, he reminds me of the Hebrew boys that said God is able to deliver us from the fire. But if he does not, we will not bow. 
You know what that reminds me of here? It reminds me of people in the 11th chapter of Hebrews that he goes on to say right after Sarah. He talks right after Sarah. He says here in verse 13, all these people died still believing what God had promised them. Some of these people did not receive what was promised, but they saw it all from a distance and welcomed it. Oh, you know what that means? He says some of these people, even when they don't see it in the natural in their lifetime, they went to their grave in faith because by faith they saw it coming afar off. Oh, my friend, I believe faith in you can be that strong. I believe for some of you, you've got a seed in your heart and you're going to harvest that seed in three months, just like that squash. Some of you've got a seed in you and it's been in you for many, many years. And you say, Karen, I've been believing for my marriage 17 years. I've been believing for my prodigal son, Karen, for 19 years and he's not home yet. Honey, don't give up. You've still got a promise in you. You've got a seed in you and that seed is alive. And maybe some of you just feel like, Karen, I've not taken care of this seed and it's just been choked out by unbelief and doubt. And I've not been, you know what? Our God can resurrect dead seed. You go out there to that seed tonight. You rip away those weeds of unbelief. You tear away the cares of this life. You start pouring the water of the word on that seed and say, God, this seed looks like it's dead, but I believe by faith you can resurrect the seed of faith in my heart. And God, I'm going to believe I'll see it manifested, whether it's in three months, whether it's tomorrow, whether it's in 10 years, whether it's 25 years like Sarah. But God, even if I don't see it in my lifetime, I'll go to my grave believing it. I'll go to my grave trusting you, God. I will believe your word that you will keep your promise. Oh, my friend, God's word to you tonight is have faith and expect a miracle. You're pregnant with a word. You're pregnant with a miracle. You keep believing it until that seed inside of your spirit is manifested and God receives great glory. Whether it's in three months or whether it's in a hundred or more years to produce something that's gonna last for generations. Oh, my friend. Take that little acorn and it hold it fast to your spirit and believe God is going to produce a miracle for you. Father, strengthen my friend that's watching tonight. Oh, I pray, God, that you will resurrect the seed of the promise inside of them. I pray, God, that seed, I declare over you right now, that seed will live and not die. You will live and not die. And you will declare the works of the Lord. You will live and not die. And you will declare the works of the Lord. I declare that over your prodigal child tonight. Your child will live and not die. And they will declare the works of the Lord. Your child's purpose is going to live. Your child's ministry. I know he's a prodigal today day, but he's going to live. That purpose will live. His ministry will live and not die. And he's going to give testimony to the glory of God in Jesus name. Your marriage will live and not die. Your body will live and not die. Even your finances will live and not die. And God, let everything in our life bring you great glory, Lord, as the seed of your word produces in Jesus name. Oh, my friend, faith in you tonight. Hope in you tonight. Remember your word. Four words. Have faith. Expect miracles. Four numbers. Hebrews 11, 11. You know what? I believe some of you are going to start seeing that number. 11, 11. All over the place. Whether it's at the, on the clock or the car tag in front of you. Start taking notice. Just start looking. And every time you see that number. Every time you see it. You'll know. God's reminding you that you're a Sarah. You're a woman of faith or you're a man of promise. And God never fails his promise. I love you, my friend. It's so good to be with you. I look forward to seeing you again next week. So until, keep the faith and keep your eyes out for your breakthrough. I love you. See you soon. Bye-bye.